So I'm back today wrapping up my seasons series to show you how to determine the different seasons. I'm going to do spring and fall together here. Unlike winter and summer, which are stark contrast of each other, spring and fall are going to be virtually identical. Obviously, they're different seasons and they're going to be different dates, but I'm going to show you how we determine the differences. I'm going to start out this time with the orbital perspective. So if you watch my other videos, A was going to be summer. C was going to be winter just by looking at the tilt of the axis. Well, you can't really look at the tilt of the axis for spring and fall because the tilt really doesn't factor into the season. Once you figure out summer and winter, now you just go in the order of the seasons. Summer, fall. This one right here, this is going to be the fall season. The fall season is 923. This is what we call the autumnal equinox. 923, the autumnal equinox. Equinox translates into equal, equal day and equal night. So summer first, winter, you figure those two out, then you can figure out fall and obviously sprig is going to be at point D, which we'll get to in a moment. I know from the North Pole perspective that this is going to be a equinox. Can't tell which one it is from the North Pole perspective. The only way you can figure this out that it's going to be fall is from the orbital perspective because we have winter and summer to compare. I know that this is going to be an equinox because you have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. It's split exactly equal, 50-50. If I go to the equatorial perspective, I know that this is going to be an equinox because the sun coming in from the right side, the terminator splits right down through the axial tilt from the North Pole to the South Pole. So you get exactly 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness across the entire planet. 12 and 12. Equinox means equal. It's equal day in equal night. Now what's nice about this is that when you look at the latitude that gets the most direct sun, I mean, it is really clear that it's gonna be the equator. Just from the position of the tilt of the axis and so on, the equator, that's where the sun is gonna be at the zenith. It's gonna be 90 degrees above the observer. This is the direct insulation. which means that the sun is at the zenith. So if you looked at my summer video and also my winter video, that zenith is gonna fluctuate between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Now in those videos, the seasons are opposite. So when it's winter in the north, it's summer in the south. When it's summer in the north, it's winter in the south. When it's fall in the north, it's spring in the south. So everything's gonna be opposite there. So again, 12 and 12 across the entire planet. Now, if I'm gonna come down here, my sun's path for fall is gonna be identical to spring. So let me kind of go through here. Let me put my observer in here. Okay. Looking north, the only object you're gonna see in the north that's really of, of note is going to be Polaris. So again, in New York State, Polaris is going to have an altitude of Polaris of 42 degrees, which means that we are at 42 degrees north latitude. I've repeated that a number of times. So again, altitude equals latitude. Let me show you again how we figure out the altitude of the noon sun in spring and fall. I showed you how to do it in summer, how to do it in winter. Again, 90 degrees is the zenith. 42 degrees is our latitude. If you subtract them, that's 48 degrees. That is going to be the position of the noon sun in spring and in fall. Now, in winter, it rose in the southeast. In summer, it rose in the northeast. It's going to rise exactly east in spring and fall. It's gonna set exactly west in spring and fall. This is sunrise. 
This is sunset. It's going to rise in the east, come back down to the west. Sunrise, sunset, 12 hours. Nine hours in winter, 12 hours in spring and fall, 15 hours in summer, the amount of daylight. Now, because it's not too low like in the winter, it's not too high in the summer, it's kind of in the middle, my observer is going to have a medium shadow. It's a little bit bigger than winter, but not quite as big, uh, not quite as small as in summer. And again, that is always going to point north. Shadow always points to opposite where the sun is. So that's going to be our fall season. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up by doing spring as well. So spring and fall, they look identical. This is going to be 321. Spring equinox. Now how do I know that this is spring? Well, I've done summertime. Summer, fall, winter, spring. Spring is going to be letter D. They're going to share the exact same characteristic except the date and the name of the season. You have to figure out summer and winter first before you can figure out fall and spring. Again, I know that this is an equinox. I can't tell you which one it is. Obviously, I know we're doing spring right now, but if this was a standalone picture, I just know that it would be an equinox because you get 12 hours of darkness and you get 12 hours of daylight. Orbital view, North Pole view. Here is the equatorial point of view. Again, it's an equinox because you're getting 12 hours of darkness and 12 hours of daylight with the sun hitting exactly at the equator. That's your zenith. It's identical. So the last two pages that I've just done, they're identical characteristics. So that's why I'm not going into as much detail with spring because it's identical to fall. Same thing with your dome. You put your observer down here. I'm not gonna go into as much detail because we've just, we've just done everything you need. There's Polaris. In the north, it's 42 degrees, altitude of Polaris. Remember, we've calculated how to get the altitude. The altitude of the noon sun was 48 degrees right here. That's our noon sun. It's going to rise exactly east and set exactly west. And that's going to be 12 hours of daylight with a medium noon shadow for my observer. Okay, so again, please go back and check out all my characteristics that I had for each of the seasons. So if I was going to go back and recap my winter season, then I went to summer, then I just did fall, and I really kind of glossed over spring just because spring and fall have identical characteristics. So I hope you find the series helpful. Please come back as many times as you need to, to kind of refresh your memory in terms of how to draw these sun's paths. Please practice these. These show up on your part two of your Regents exam all of the time. Practice makes perfect with these. Until next time, everybody, thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you soon.